come on in. You've got a ticket to a front row seat. Guys, we're right next to her. Right there. I know, she's so close. So you can soak in the moments when everything's lined up to see records fall. We're all yelling, you know, fall. To witness the steps no one thought were possible. Good job, Dea. And to soak in the memories. 65 years ago, tonight. By reliving the good old days. <laughs> in the very same spot, some say they died. Music didn't die, honey. It's living on it. Take a deep breath. It's nerve wracking. Rise to your feet. It was amazing. And lace up those tennies. She's wearing her expensive shoes. Because we're taking you inside the room where it happened. <laughs> this is Iowa. KCCI presents a celebration of the people who make our state special. This is Iowa. All across our state, memorable moments unfold every day. It's one thing to hear about them later, and another to be in the room when they happen. Like the moment that even several weeks later keeps spinning around Jefferson's town square. The crack of exploding pins lures in bowling addicts. I bowl five times a week. Who love to see them fall, even when one game a year luck strikes for a new bowler. They get three or four in a row, and then it's like, uh oh, now you're watching because you want to see what they're going to do next. Carter Fetcher found a lot of gutters when he started. I was averaging 30 when I was nine. So now that he bowls on Greene County's high school team, he loves it when that pair of Velcros shows up on lane six with his own ball. And then Pierce Abbott goes to work. The Jefferson nine-year-old caught the bowling bug when he was only six and something struck. He could experience the same highs and lows as his dad. It's a lot of fun from a lot of different aspects, but it's also just as frustrating. So. <laughs> While hanging with the big boys on varsity, and sometimes beating them. He was beating adults, yeah. Yep. Yes, Pierce uses two hands. It helps me because I'm nine. But plenty of pros do too. So you can increase the weight of your ball and throw it faster. Smacking the pins in the perfect spot so they all fall. The one takes out the two, four, seven, and then the three takes out the six and ten, and then the ball takes out the seven, eight, and five. The guy in those size three Velcros doesn't mess around. So no one flinched when Pierce entered Jefferson's New Year's Eve tournament. I have to strike. And started throwing. Strike. After. Strike. Threw good ball after good ball after good ball. One of my friends started talking about me. I think people kind of started to take notice. Saying. I'll give you 20 bucks if you shoot a 300. <laughs> about after like the fifth, sixth frame, you just couldn't miss. I was actually bowling right here. I was bowling on nine and 10. Gets around the whole entire bowling alley. Started gathering around. We all just stopped and just watched. Nobody was talking to me. So then when it's eight in a row, then it's like, all right, I better start watching. It's like, geez, he's striking, strike, strike, strike. Mm -hmm. it's impressive. Hey, you know, Pierce is on, on to something. He's nine, that's crazy. Nine strikes in nine frames. And you're going, oh my God, here, you know, here's our chance. With perfection a possibility, Pierce's knees were shaking, and his dad was worried. My fear, honestly, was that he was gonna, he was going to miss, and uh, and then have this big letdown. But 42 minutes into the new year, Dad hit record. Everybody, it's just quiet. The whole bowling alley exploded. People start cheering. Everybody's giving me high fives and talking to me. Perfect 300s just don't light up scoreboards for someone Pierce's age. It is rare. You know, the odds are the same as getting, you know, getting a hole in one. In fact, no one in America has had a perfect game any younger, ever. But the tournament he did it in? My 300 wasn't sanctioned, so, um, like it didn't count. Kind of a bummer. So the fourth grader moved on to the tournament, played Jacob for third place. He beat me. And celebrated his perfect start to a new year like any nine-year-old champion would. He's just like, you know, I asked, asked for chicken nuggets. <laughs> just, wanted, <laughs> just wanted some chicken nuggets. Across the state, <laughs> the celebration's even bigger in the room where the buckets keep falling. Can you wave to her? We're taking you to game night at Carver. We're also there in the room for the little steps that are really 
huge. That's awesome. Looking so good. But first, we're cutting a rug to prove in this room, the music did not die. <laughs> this is Iowa. It's been 65 years since the day the music died when music giants Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, and the Big Bopper died in a plane crash just north of Clear Lake. But every year on the day the music died, it comes alive once again. Every day, people park along 315th Street north of Clear Lake where a rural field now brings so many emotions. All right, I'll take a few. Pay your respects to the lives that uh, were lost so young. All right, buddy. Today, February 3rd, marks a somber day in music history. It just seemed like it was it was supposed to be today, so we're, we're venturing out to the site. Jay Knox from Urbandale is making the quarter mile trek on ice oh <laughs> to see the memorial. Taking a, a little trip out into the middle of a cornfield. In 1959, three of the world's most promising rock and roll artists performed at the Surf Ballroom in Clear Lake as part of their winter dance party tour. Their one-of-a-kind sound was taking the Midwest and the country by storm. What those three gentlemen may have uh, given the world if they would have had a, a longer life. After the show, Buddy, JP, and Richie chartered a plane to their next stop. But shortly after taking off from Mason City in the early morning hours of February 3rd, the plane crashed right here. The three young stars and the pilot died. 65 years ago, tonight, the day the music died. JP was 28, Buddy was 22, pilot Roger Peterson 21, and Richie Valens 17. Do you remember that day? Oh, it was devastating. Richie's sister Connie remembers the moment her family got the news. We never felt so alone. My mom was broken. And that broke us to see her like that. That day, Connie lost more than a big brother. I mean, I was eight, you know, but he was almost a father figure to me. And so when I lost him, I didn't just lose my brother. I lost my dad because he used to take care of us. But the day that was once filled with so much sadness. We come here and it's alive. The, the memories are alive. Has become a celebration. Everybody's still excited about it. That's why they come. That's why they come. They come to celebrate. So like I told Don, the music didn't die, honey. It's living on. Rock and roll. Heaven is alive. And we're out. And we're here. If you take a look around Clear Lake, Iowa on the day the music died, you'd never know 65 years has passed. People flood the town wearing poodle skirts, wingtip shoes, and classic hats to clap along to the classics, to sing at the top of their lungs, to hear that one song they've been dying to hear, and to dance like Nolta and Marilyn from Wisconsin, or Jack, from Hampton. Yeah. But this is just the party before the party. We look forward to it all year, don't yeah. we? Yeah. yeah, I'm a cheerleader tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we thought, well, enough poodle skirts. Every year, people pack the same surf ballroom where Buddy, Richie, and JP played their final show. You're good to go. There you go. Thank, Thank you. you. And they come from all over the world. The UK. <laughs> Joan Marshall made the trip across the pond for this. So I thought, right, I'm going to come. Dummy bucket list, I'm coming. We're here from Florida, Vero Beach, Florida. Hugo and Donna Concha drove 24 hours for more than just the music. The people here in Iowa, oh my God, they are so nice. I, I think they're unbeatable. And it's not just a room full of people who were actually here in 1959. They said it would never last. Here we are. <laughs> Teenagers who wish they were. I've always felt I belonged in that time more than this one. Looking to cut a rug. I miss the time when school dances, people actually dance. <laughs> as long as we speak their names and listen to their music, we'll never forget that. People come to Clear Lake, Iowa in February to pay their respects to legends, to sing and dance with friends old and new, 
while reminiscing about the good old days. It's not easy for something to transcend generations, for a sound to unite everybody in the room, or for tragedy to turn into celebration. This is Richie I'll be on the Winter Dance Party coming your way very shortly. I will be having a ball singing for you, and I hope to see you all real soon. But in Clear Lake, in this room, on this night, one thing is certainly clear. The music didn't die. In another room. Ready, one, two, three, three, go. push. The movement is slower, but the milestones are massive, especially in the room where everybody rose to their feet. She didn't know that she got a standing ovation. We're headed to the room where that happened next. This is Iowa. Gyms around Iowa are full of people working to stay in shape, but if you look around, you will see powerful moments unfolding, like here at On With Life in Ankeny, where one Iowa teenager is making life-changing steps. Right, let's see if we can do 10 of them. Squats in the gym can make even the strongest legs feel shaky. Good. Nice. But for Jay a fever, that trembling is a welcome feeling. Yeah, five more. Because one year ago, she couldn't even move. A car crash on December 9th, 2022, shattered everything when the high school senior on her way to school on a foggy morning hit a utility pole. It's just the story you didn't think you were going to be living, um, and that's the story of tragedy. A traumatic brain injury, a coma, and the darkest days followed. Once an artist with big dreams, 18-year-old Jaya now suddenly faced the possibility of never being able to use her hands again. It's hard because you're grieving the daughter that was and, and, and the hopes and dreams maybe you had, you know, like we thought she'd be at college. That's um, one of the hardest parts is learning to let go yeah. of what you were holding on to. Mm -hmm. And you don't realize what you're holding on to until you have to let go of it. But with letting go came new beginnings, pivotal moments that rewrote Jaya's story, like when she stood for the first time three weeks after the accident. Okay, so it's ready, one, two, three, go, push. Oh, it's Good job, Jaya. Oh. Still in a coma state, Jaya's parents describe this moment as their first sign of hope. Get a girl, lift your head. Lift your head up. You look so good. Hold and push, push, you're standing. Look up, Jaya. Good job, Jaya. You look so good. All the way. Up tall, up tall. Can you try and pull up tall? Bring your eyes up to me up here. Jaya, look at me over here. <laughs> yeah. Good job. Jaya. Jaya, that's awesome. Looking so good. And hope kept growing from there. Jaya spent months at Shirley Ryan in Chicago, learning to touch, move, and walk again. At first, I mean, I thought, like, I didn't know what was going on, so I felt like I was in a dream, and I didn't know why I couldn't do all of these things that I should have been able to do. It took months for Jaya's brain to comprehend the trauma it endured. She says she often felt like a prisoner in her own body. Everyone my age and even younger than me will be in college or graduated and I don't want to be like I kind of feel like I'm being left behind even though I'm not. Determined not to be left behind, Jaya set a goal to walk at her high school graduation in Adair. Jaya Madeline Fever. And with hundreds watching and a cane in hand, she took those monumental steps about six months after the crash. Because she was focusing so hard on every step she was taking, trying not to trip, getting up the stage, she didn't know that she got a standing ovation. She saw everybody sit down once she came down the stage and she said, well, why did everybody sit down for me? And I'm like, Jaya, everybody stood for you. Like, you got a standing ovation. It was, it was amazing. Yeah. 
Yeah, there you go, big strides. Inch by inch, day by day, Jaya continues to get stronger with the help of her therapist set on with life in Ankeny. When she came in, like the walk test we did, she can only do like 600 feet. We just redid that a few weeks ago and she could do like 1,500 feet in the same amount of time. So she's doubled the distance, not on a cane anymore. Jaya still has double vision from the brain injury, which hinders her balance. Despite this, she keeps going. Sink into those legs, push through your heels. Good. It's like... I had to get used to it because the last one I was like, okay, I have to like be on my toes. Yep, yeah, you have to switch your mechanics up. Three days a week, she's in the gym. She has worked so incredibly hard. Every and day. Every day. And I mean, and every day is hard, you know, like every step she takes is hard. She has to think about where she places her foot. All, I mean, every single step she takes. Come up, big push. Good. Nobody can do make your progress, your steps for you. You have to be able to like be willing and motivated enough to do it yourself. Jaya now hopes to be a therapist one day, working with patients with traumatic brain injuries, showing them she is walking proof that small steps make the biggest difference. I think that would kind of hopefully be inspiring to them. You'll find plenty of inspiration and no empty seats in the room where this winter's magic happens. Oh, Caitlin. But the game's only a sliver of the story when 22's in the room. Can you wave to her? Can we wave? Elementary age strategies and intricate itineraries to be in the room where 10 second moments and autographs are everything. This is I. Right now, the silence inside Carver Hawkeye Arena is deafening, but just outside, fans are buzzing to see one of the greatest college basketball players of all time. Whether it's a mile like a weather. or hundreds, Michigan, so like seven hours, <laughs> people will leave behind their belongings. Follow this line. Clear back at all times. Pray their ticket scans. Just one. Thank you. So they can join an exclusive club Three. of eyewitnessing Caitlin Clark. Let's go, Caitlin Clark! Two hours before tip off, the arena swells with fans. But it wasn't always this way. We used to have the curtains down many years ago. Now, most expensive tickets we've ever paid for. We flew from Memphis to Chicago and then to Des Moines and drove two hours. An excursion to be right here in the arena where children have become the experts. Is she coming down here? Yeah, she comes out of the tunnel. Can we wave to her? Yeah, we can wave. Until the moment finally comes. She's wearing her expensive shoes. Guys, we're right next to her. Right there. When she drops three, after three. Yes, Caitlin. Oh, that was so good. From the logo, from the logo. After three. And there's no need to zoom in. We got early enough to go watch her shoot. Of course, she was the, she was the only one out there. She was taller than in the video. I just want to go out and play basketball the rest of my life. <laughs> You feel like you're invincible. And the thing is, is that every every basket she makes, you just feel it, you know, with pride and it's exciting. So much so, fans feel like they know her. <laughs> oh, Caitlin, come back. When she does, you're just very proud to be from Iowa. That's it. Mm -hmm. Jaws drop. Okay. And eyes widen. Because it's showtime. Oh, come on, come on. Go, Caitlin. Yeah! Fans are dialed into her every move. Go, Caitlin. Go, Caitlin. Watching the player who's transcending the game. Yeah! Yeah! Come on, Caitlin. Let's go. Make him pay. She's not happy. She's going to score and addicting to watch. Oh! Oh my God! The center of attention down there doesn't even have to score to impress them. What a pass! That's why she's the all-time greatest. Holy cow. 
trading buckets for deafening decibels. Then fans wait. Very. Very. Patiently. The time and the energy. All to get 10 seconds with Caitlin Clark. It's an effect and it's contagious. Because sure, it's fun to hear a good story or see one on the screen, but it's special if you're in the room when the pins crash, the music lives, the patient walks, or the threes fall. I'm Eric Hansen. This is Iowa.